Final map, Tomb of the Spider Queen. The least special map. If we look at the entire series. Towers cannot attack the core. Braxes, only two lanes. Now, one of the most classical maps. A wave clear fiesta. Three lanes, very close to one another. Where wave clear is important. But we have seen Bushido play the map differently. To the point where they don't emphasize on wave clear as much. But they emphasize on denial. He emphasizes on denial. Uh, Bushido emphasizes on denial. So they take something like mouth. They take something like chromie. And they non-stop interrupt gem turn-ins. So rather than controlling the waves, they control the objective. I'm curious to see if they will uh, whether they will employ this strategy once again. Or if they'll play like how we usually see it in Europe. Which is things like double support, double warrior, Johanna as the warrior, wave clear, rinse and repeat, don't go for kills, go for the late game, and bring one of your heroes to that late game where they can carry. For example, Lunara, great late game assassin. Zuljin. Another great late game assassin with good stacks. So let's see. Another Medivh ban by Always Lucky. Uh, double Tracer was used by Always Lucky. So the Tassadar ban is wise. You would not give that willingly to them. Ariel was used twice in a row as well by Always Lucky. That's another thing to consider. Of course, it was more effective in game one together with Cho'Gal than in game two with just Vala Tracer. But it's something to remember. Will it be an Ariel first pick? I doubt it. Cho'Gal not nearly as good on the three lane map. It is going to be an Ariel first pick. So this oozes the threat of chaos. Cho'Gal must be far more on the minds of Bushido than it was in game one, where they lost so badly. If it is going to be Cho'Gal, do you pick it now as Bushido? I don't think so. So you pick counters. And what are counters? Anubarak with Cocoon. Would be very surprised if we don't see an immediate Anubarak pick, or at least a pick in general, regardless, irrespective of how long. It's not going to be Anubarak. It'll be Rhaegar snatch one of the best supports and another great pick against Jogal, Cursed Bullet, Greymane. I think these are the top two picks against Jogal, both Greymane and Anubarak. But they're gonna go with Rhaegar. Will Chaos come? It would be kind of one trick to try it again. And the draft won't be nearly as good. The surprise is out. But it would be a good way to test whether it can still work against a far more prepared team. If if science is the goal for always lucky, Chogal would be a good experiment. Once again, at, at high stakes, semi-high stakes now, if I may say, to play it again, to see if it can stand the test of time, and they will do it. I appreciate and actually support this decision. The stakes today for always lucky are the difference between zero dollars of prize money or 600. I think that's worth it to learn more about your strategy, to see if it can resist for a second time a far more prepared opponent. This is how I would practice in private, in scrims. But it's even better to quote unquote practice in an official setting. One of the things about scrims is you must continue to evaluate the willingness for your opponent to win the game. Ideally, your practice partners are full try hard every time. 
to prepare you for the tournament, right? But you can't guarantee it. Some people undervalue scrims and they don't give their best. So to try it here again is the best possible practice you can get. And they want to know, can we take this strategy with us in two weeks from now, even when people prepare it? So let's see. A Nubrak ban would be wise, in my opinion. But if they don't, that will be another test. Can they withstand the two finest Shogal counters in Greyman and the Nubarak? If it's not a noob, who would they ban? ETC? For a power slide, cursed bullet combination? Will it be Leoric, who has great wave clear power on this map and does pretty okay against Shogal? It is going to be ETC. I'm not disappointed or surprised by that. We mentioned the possibility. He has been one of the primary warriors. He was very good last game in, against Stitches as well. Excuse me, I just have to blow my nose. Well sorted. Okay, so Bushido, do you go for Anubarak now? Or do you go for Johanna to play for the slow game? Johanna and let's say... Yeah, is there really a good second support available anymore? I don't think there is. They tried Johanna in game one against Jogal. It was bad. It should be really bad now too. Balloon, grant us strength for okay. the frozen throne. Okay. Good luck with your science experiment. Always lucky. Needs me. Last pick should be the Haka, I would say. Maybe Sonia, but I don't think so. Oh, okay. Malfael. <coughs> Excuse me. Leaving a Malfael could not have predicted this. Final pick should be maybe Leoric, but double warrior double support does not do well against Malthiel, so that's kind of uh, the additional threat here from Always Lucky. They basically have triple assassin, right? Gaul, Li Ming, Mouth. And Mouth with his touch of death at level 7 gives a 50% healing reduction for 4 seconds to all targets hit by his trait, his mark. So that reduces much of the value of both Rhaegar and Mouth. And also Mouth does percentage based damage, which does well against warriors. So if you go like double triple warrior, Mouth is devastating. This is a point against both Sonya and Leo. On the other hand, Sonya, Leo, Anoop, they are lower health warriors Good on the spectrum. The so it's more okay than, for example, Stitches Muradin. Huh? But it is not going to be another warrior. This means that Rhaegar is the solo laner for Bushido Esports. As he has self heal and good wave clear. But Rhaegar can't do much against Malfael. And Bushido has gone for a cutting edge draft of Tracer. With, uh, with Malf Rhaegar support. Tracer is, in my opinion... Not a threat for Chogal whatsoever. Her goal will be to take out Li Ming. And ultimately, with Ariel being a solo support once again, there are a lot of windows for Tracer to land a pulse bomb on either Malfael or Li Ming and to finish them off when there are simply no heals available. Prepare yourself. I am very uh, fascinated by the drafts here. And I do believe both teams have a chance to win. I actually feel a little bit better about Always Lucky's draft, who are on the right here, but we'll see how it plays out. Kirwa on Li Ming. We have Stalk and Prepared on Chogao. Kumiko on Ariel and Kunichan on Malthael. Bushido Esports are in the blue on the left. Vortex Lucifron on Greyman and Anubarak. Gadam Herd on Vegar. Siku on Malf and Tix on Tracer. Heroes. 
the uh, funny roll position here is that normally you would expect Ziku, the dedicated solo laner, to be on Rhaegar, to be the solo laner. And you would expect the support player, which is Gadonhad, to be on Mal. Because normally you don't put your solo laner support. Uh, you don't put your solos, like your main support role, in the solo lane. But Gadamhead is so good at Rhaegar that I fully understand this prioritization. And Mouth, in this case, is a bit more of a ranged assassin because he's gonna go for the Moonburn build, the Moonfire build. And then there aren't really solo lanes. What I said, Rhaegar being solo lane, is not happening. Mouth here is played as a tracer and ranged assassin. Uh, sorry, Malf is played as the substitute for Tassadar. With the consistent heals on Tracer that stick with her over time. Which is just perfect. So we have a bit more of a 3-2 split. And I like it. Good strategy by Bushido. Additionally, Malf is great on Tomb of the Spider Queen because he can interrupt Pay Station with Moonfire repeatedly. That may even lead Credence to the fact that he might want to take Elune's Grace at 4 rather than the full damage Moonfire build. We'll see. Because Elune's Grace can help with the cancels. It depends whether he wants to go for the DPS or for the objective control. A compelling choice. Take that, Liming. Lucifer on. Taking the heat. We'll go down. First kill. Good job. By Stalk and Prepare. The entire team here for Always Lucky was in attendance. What does Malf take it for? It will be much telling of the strategy for Bushido. Will it be a Loon's Grace? Yes. No mad mad DPS build instead. Map control. Objective control. No fear at all for Jogal. <laughs> Four ticks, 16 gems. Dies. Gems are picked up though by Gadam Ha. Kunichan, very deep. May die for this. Yep. But he got a lot of stacks, right? Is it worth it? Uh, 24, not that many. <coughs> Two for one. A lot of gems on Chogal. 47 for Always Lucky here, 44 for Bushido. Mouth taking control of the objective. Grey main checking the other one. Grey main has a positive matchup against Li Ming. He can fairly easily dodge her skill shots, and if they ever get close to each other, Greyman will devastate. Leaving. In game one, Chogal used Hammer of Twilight, which increases his auto attack damage and gives him. A 15 second cooldown on a stun and knockback. Small knockback, small stun. The other heroic that Cho can pick is Upheaval, which is a large cone shaped pull in. It does small amount of damage, but a large amount of displacement. This can be pretty strong on a character like Malfurion or a Rhaegar, but Twilight Dream is a risk. I feel like Hammer of Twilight is once again the more likely outcome for Cho's heroic choice, but we shall see. First, web turn in, very good job, goes to Bushido Esports. But Choga is starting to work at the web weaver problem at the source. Doesn't want to overextend too much though, so pulls back. 
Nice and tangle. It is uh, hindering Moonfire at 7, by the way. It is slow. Not anything about damage or CDR on Moonfire. Uh, A lot of damage from the Web Weavers. Two towers down. Four. Can they get more? That should be a deadly Ming. Tracer, one of the best counters to Li Ming. Joga has to be careful. He holds the hope of the future in his hands. Those gems are the comeback tickets for Always Lucky, but how can they ever pay? What Always Lucky lacks is crowd control. They have no stunts to quickly force a fight. They are purely a damage based combo. Everything except Oriole's Detainment Strike is just damage. They are damage and HP. That's it. That means they can only kill targets that choose to stay around willingly. So how can they ever win? Right? They would have to just damage waves and heroes so much that they cannot afford to stay around and then pay. But Malf can interrupt the objective from so far away that it'll be that you have to zone the entire double lanes away. So maybe rather than Hammer of Twilight, upheaval is the choice here for Cho'Gal so that there is a way to initiate a fight. We shall know soon. Level 10 is approaching. However, they may not reach it on time. Another web weaver turn in is in the cards for Bushido Esports. If they go pay with Rhaegar and Tr Tracer. No, just Tracer is enough. And they will get it. Double web weavers. Let's look at the heroic. It is Hammer of Twilight once again. Twisting Nether. So that's still initiation. If Jogal jumps in and cast Twisting Nether. That's a way to start a fight, right? But how much will they lose to the Web Weaver in the meantime? No, Kumiko cannot rotate like this. Can he? Okay. He can. Cocoon is available. Tormented Souls or Last Rites. He has Last Rites, actually. So Last Rites is a pick that Malthael can often take if he is afraid to get Cocoon. If you turn on Tormented Souls and you get Cocoon, you lose the entire ult. And it has a longer cooldown than Cocoon. So you go Last Rites. But it's not easy to guarantee a kill with it. Blue team has destroyed a fort. Web Weaver still alive here. Tower goes down. Garden Herd will likely pick up the wave. Nope, he's too smart. I would have taken the wave and died to Joko. Lol. Now he has help. Seventy-eight gems on Chogal. The maximum you can hold is one hundred on one hero. Does Chogal get double? Can he carry two hundred? I don't think so. I'm afraid. Twisting Nether gets turned on. Cocoon. Twisting Nether blows up without anyone being near. The ult was effectively wasted. Besides the little slow element. Nonetheless, they get the kill. Oh, ancestral 0.1 second away from landing. Good job, always lucky. Getting a Nubarak and Greymane. Last rides was used on the Nubarak before, and he got one stack. So the cooldown has been reduced by five seconds. Well played. Very important sequence of moves by always lucky. They're getting back into it. They lost two forts, almost a third. They were down three to two in takedowns but they can now pick up a lot of xp here and here and they have a web weaver push
unburdening themselves from much of the gems they were carrying. Double bruiser camp here. Bruiser camps are great at stopping web weavers. Look at this. Stopping it in its tracks. Mid is where Always Lucky makes a stand. Allowing top and bot to push in by themselves, but it'll take a little bit of time. So they need to stay here. Level 13 is reached. Frenzied Fist. What is attack speed? We have Cannoneer for leaning. Ethereal Existence. Blinding Flash. Good against Grey Man. Uh, bottom Web Weaver is falling. Karen Herod is doing good work. Kunichan will try to focus him solo. I wonder that Mouth doesn't have uh, Die Alone at 4 when he's going last right build. They didn't get that much out of it. Towers are gone, but no forts were really damaged all that much. All alts are available on either side. Siku is low. Pei. Kunichan unburdens himself from 34 gems. Chogal will not be able to do likewise. Risky time. Chogal is very hurt. Will there be a cocoon engage? No. They make their getaway. How many gems does Bushido have? 45. Mouth says no thank you. Oh, they go for Rhaegar. Twisting Nether. Slow is in effect. Getting slower and slower. And explosion. A lot of damage. Last rise cannot be cast. In comes the cocoon. Makes a lot of sense that they pick Li Ming, right? I didn't really talk about this yet, but this is why. Disintegrate. To quickly deal with cocoon. I like that. I should have mentioned that. The boon is now gone. All heroics are available except Twisting Nether. Disintegrate will be back soon. Okay, this has to be it. Always like he has to go back. They're taking too much damage on too many different targets. They cannot keep healing up so easily. Twilight Dream is available. Gotta be careful of that mouth. 16 is close. They cannot stay. Always Lucky is making a big mistake staying here. They will pay the price, mark my words. Last rites was used, did not get a kill. Twisting Nether is back. Twisting Nether is back, he's not using it yet. I hope you didn't mark my words, because Always Lucky has not yet paid for their uh, insolence, their persistence. <laughs> oh! Twisting Nether. Will wave clear. <coughs> the first Ariel Chogal win was too fast. Oh! Didn't pay! So we never got to see what Oriel picks at 16. But uh, in this game... Oh, they actually pushed out Bushido down a talent. Very impressive. Really hope you didn't mark our words. <laughs> That's so impressive. We're going to see what Oriel takes at level 16, by the way. Reservoir of Hope or Wrath of Heaven. Will of Heaven, the one that does spell power. Reservoir of Hope, makes sense. Every time Kumiko does a full heal, he will gain 75 bonus max energy. Did it once, do it again. There we go, two stacks, just like that. Ticks, very low. Let's take a look at the stacks. Uh. Reservoir of Hope doesn't show, apparently. I can show you, but it would look ugly for a second. 
four stacks already. So fast. Twisting nether. It's huge. Oh, boom. Joe Gall died when Kumiko was inside the cocoon. Last rides. Good damage, but immediately gets out healed. For some reason, always like he thought they could continue to move in with 3v, no, yeah, 3v5, which turned out to be as bad of an idea as that sounds mathematically. An insult to injuries added. However, their sacrifice not entirely in vain. Additional structural damage was dealt by virtue of their sacrifice. Was it worth it? I would say not. The Chogal death was painful, but it was made much worse by the follow-up. But look at this. They go immediately for the boss, ignoring even juicy XP's like this. Keep walls gone. So the play here is take the boss, open up top, and get closer and closer to 20. Turn in. The player is to go for level 20 for Bushido. The clutch is filled, blue team. My power shall aid you. Boss will be cleared. It will only kill a tower and a gate. And a wall. Twenty so close. How many stacks does Oriel have? Six. Last right, only one. <coughs> Excuse me. This is a tough defense for always lucky. They will try to defend mid weaver. Oh wow, they go in pre twenty. the top keep Bushido is looking to win this game very soon top keep survives with 10% bottom keep goes down no twisting nether at this point you just have to play it passively as always lucky you need to wait for your level 20s and then try to make one final stand but you take a look at the gem counter and you ask yourself can we survive another web weaver phase? I think the answer is no. Not without 20. So it's a catch 22. Defend and die with 1920. Or die to the web weaver phase. But they decide to play against web weavers. Hoping that they can get 20 on time. I think it's the right call. But almost certainly, top keep will die. That one is gone. Mid keep, very likely to die as well. So if they only defend mid, top keep will die, and you'll have double web weaver pushing on the core. Either way, this is a terrible situation for always lucky. And Bushido holding all the cards. I feel like Bushido should move in hard. And they do. Rewind used on the Nubarak. Cocoon on the Ariel. He still has Burrow Charge. Lucifer on. Lucifer on! Ancestral was used. Panic. Panic at the disco. That was not the fight that Bushido wanted or needed. To guarantee a victory. Mid keep is still alive. That was very well dealt with by Always Lucky. And really not quite that good by Bushido. Level 20 will be reached and mid keep survives. This is incredible, an incredible defense by Always Lucky, and far better than they could have possibly hoped for. And now they get their 20s, Shield of Hope. We get Katoon's Gift, 20% slow for 2 seconds and range on this auto attack. 
They find a beetle. Can they squash it? Look at that ranged attack. He has bonus attack speed too. Every time he does a surging dash, he gains 75% attack speed. He gains an unstoppable healing per second. He's got seared flesh. Consecutive basic attacks deal more damage. Very threatening for an Uberak. We get the Twisting Nether upgrade. Shifting Nether. Twisting Nether now teleports Cho to a targeted location before it begins channeling. I didn't even know this exists. Talrasha's elements for a generic spell power bonus damage. Only Ming. And Malthiel withholds his judgment. He's got only one stack on last ride, so the upgrade to his alt is not that good. The most likely consideration is that if Malth dies, he will pick up No One Can Stop Death. Which is an instant revive, but delays his next death and respawn. So he holds his town. This is a good play for Malth. He can pay 66 gems, always lucky. Able to get back in this game. This is an incredible third game here in the semi-finals of Cup 7. Core is under they find a the mouth. Twisting Nether teleportation. <laughs> Look at that damage from the auto attacks. It's crazy. Four gems being paid! Oh, sorry. Missed my hype moment. Midkeep died. I did not catalog it, by the way. It's gone. One kata push. Bushido's playing this smart, though. Oh! The entangle didn't proc on time to cancel the uh, turn in. Malthiel dies. He will pick up. No one can stop death. Instantly return. But will it be too late? Li Ming? The silence is very long. Oh, Li Ming. Shifting Nether will be back in six seconds. Uh oh. How many stacks does Kumiko have? 16! He has an energy bar of 2,352. Shield of Help will be back in 15 seconds. In 10. Shield of Help isn't back yet. Monka S. Maltia goes down. They kill Rhaegar. Good job. Cho'Gal. Shield of Help comes out. Vortex! Greyman gets killed. Cocoon. This is Cho'Gal and Ariel. You cannot hope to stand against them. Lucifron. <gasps> Lucifron survives. Tracer. Dead. Is always lucky doing it? <gasps> Four took 10% damage. Can they get the keep? Nubra comes back. Nice impale. But ultimately, Joe Gall doesn't give a damn. Go for the core. Three members still dead. It's only Malf with Astral Communion, mind you. Does he channel it? Can he? That's catapults defending. They need to kill these katas. Shield of help. Too early. Too early. Shield of hope. Panic. Oh! Melv missed his Twilight Dream. What did he do? Living dies. Cho'Gal. Kills Rhaegar. There is no Shield of Hope. Can Cho'Gal live? Cho'Gal goes down. 81% on the core. Everyone except Rhaegar is back. And only Malthiel to defend the core. Let's grab a bruiser camp, I guess. Are 
Hearthstone. Two Katkas. Greyman can kill this core by himself. Can he though? Wait, last right! Kill him! He's dead! Maltheal has returned. Maltheal will not be able to hold. Bushido wins. Well played. Awesome game. If that shield of hope wasn't used quite that fast at quite that high of a health pool of all the heroes, maybe. But it was always going to be difficult. A very good game here and a very nice match between these uh, two, a very nice best of three between Bushido Esports, our number two seeded team and always lucky, our number six seeded team. 12-1 victory. <laughs> Oops. 2-1 victory. Bushido Esports goes to the Grand Finals and will face off against Leftovers, our number one seeded team. It's our number one versus two. We couldn't have asked for a better finals. Winner takes the lion's share of the prize money and sends a powerful message to all the other Open Division teams. We are number uno. Keeping them here is nice. Doing an all-out fight is not necessary. Oh. oh! Ouch! Oh! Double 